Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. I thought I'd do something a little different in this video. I thought I'd do a little demonstration. So, I went to a website called cgtextures.com. It's a really awesome website. They have lots of really great uh, texture sources that you are freely allowed to use for your own projects, whether they be commercial or not. Uh, of course, uh, they're not a sponsor or anything like that. Um, I just really like their uh, service. Uh, so I went there and I downloaded a couple of texture files and I thought I would just show you uh, something quickly and easily to kind of help us get the ball rolling uh, on UV layouts and texturing objects. So first what I have, let me just open Photoshop here. So I'm going to open uh, this brick texture that I got off of cgtextures.com. So we're going to use this brick image as a texture in our scene. So let me go back to Maya now, and I'll just go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Plane. And we're going to be mostly talking about polygons for the most part when it comes to textures. I will go into textures with NURBS at some point, but right now we're going to be mainly focusing with polygons just because I think polygons are easier to deal with when it comes to learning how texturing works. And then once you understand it, then you can move on to NURBS, where NURBS are a little bit more complicated. So instead of starting with the more complicated thing, we're going to start with the easier thing and start with polygons. So I have this plane here, I'm going to rotate it you know, 90 degrees, lift it up like this above the ground plane here, and I'm going to decrease my subdivisions down to 1. We don't need all those uh, vertices and edges cutting through our plane. So I have this gray plane. Right click on it and choose Assign New Material. And for now, I'm just going to choose a Lambert. A Lambert is a material that has no specular or anything like that. It's strictly a matte finish material, which is not necessarily accurate for brick, but for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, we're just going to stick with Lambert for now. We'll have future topics talking about different material types and how they're used and such. I do have, while I'm on the subject of materials, this video here, if you want to click that, it says Introduction to Materials. And what it does, it talks a little bit about different kinds of materials, but mostly goes through all of the common material attributes that you see listed here. If I scroll down my attribute editor, between Special Effects and here, this top folder, we go through all those different attributes and how they work and what they do, and talk a little bit more about other, you know, basic material information. So check out that video uh, for a basic introduction to materials and we're going to get into more details as we go forward. So with Lambert 2 here applied to my plane, I'm going to rename Lambert 2 to be say brick wall, hit enter. So now my Lambert is now called brick wall. And for the color common material attribute here, I'm going to click this checkerboard uh, box on the right side. This is the mapping button. Click that to map something to the color attribute and the create render node window opens up here I'm going to choose the file so I'm going to use an external file external from Maya a file that I've already prepared to assign to the color attribute of this material so I'm going to choose file so the attributes for the file open up here and you have lots of different things in here but the main thing we're looking at is image name and we have this folder we can browse to the image that I have so I'm going to go to that image. So once I've found that image, I can select it, choose open. And that assigns it here in the image name input box. And you can see the sample here shows the picture of the bricks. But you don't see it on my plane because I don't have textured view visible. Right now it's just shaded view, which is the 5 key. If you press the 6 key, it turns on textured view. So here you can see the brick is now visible on the Lambert that I assigned to the plane. So right away you might notice one thing that's kind of wrong about it. If I go back to Photoshop, you can see the bricks, these longer bricks are horizontal left to right in my source file. Go back to Maya, and you can see they're actually vertical here. So the texture itself is flipped 90 degrees on my mesh. I can fix that simply by rotating the mesh if that works, or I might need to adjust the UV coordinates of the uh, of the plane to change how the texture is oriented on my plane. Talked a little bit about UVs in, my, in our introduction to UVs. 
that I did earlier. You can click this uh, thumbnail image here to go to that video. Introduces the concept of UVs and what they do. So here we're going to actually make a change that is relevant using UVs. So I want these bricks to be oriented 90 degrees the way they are in the source uh, texture that I downloaded. So I'm going to close the attribute editor by hitting Control A just to get more space on my screen here and I'll choose my perspective slash UV editor over here on the left and my camera presets. If you don't have that just right click on any of these and you can choose from a long list perspective slash UV editor here. So if I click that my perspective view is on the left and my UV editor here is on the right. So if you did watch the introduction to UVs video that I linked to a second ago you can see here our grid that we had talked about in that video and our texture is visible here in the upper right positive X positive Y quadrant of this grid. So my texture is simply right here and the white square you see is because I have the plane selected and this is the plane UV shell that I see here. If I right click in my UV editor I can choose UV as my component selection type and I can choose the UVs like so. If I click and drag a box, a marquee selection box around all four, I have all four UVs selected. Hit the W key for the move tool and I can move them around. And you can see how that texture shifts position on the plane. Now the plane itself is not moving, just the texture coordinates of those vertices are moving along the plane. This piece of geometry is staying still. The UVs are moving around on the texture changes and that changes how the texture is displayed. I can grab one of these points and you can see how that really skews the texture on the plane. So what I want to do is grab all four, hit the E key for rotation and rotate it like so. Now you can see one thing I want to make sure I do is get my rotation to be exactly 90 degrees and it's kind of hard to do by hand so I'm going to undo that so we're back to the longer bricks being this vertical position. Up here in my UV toolbar we have lots of different options and right here these two buttons are rotate selected UVs clockwise and counterclockwise so I can click this once and it rotates 45 degrees click it again it rotates another 45 degrees which equals 90 degrees and now I know I've rotated this UV shell a perfect 90 degrees and then I can orient them how I'd like on the bricks so if I look now at my bricks, you can kind of tell that the shadow for the brick is above the brick, which means my bricks are actually upside down. So I'll simply click this a couple more times. And now the brick shadows are on the bottom, and now I know my bricks are oriented correctly. So that's really simply how you can assign a texture to an object and adjust its UVs here and rotate them with these two buttons here. And there's lots of different buttons in here that do different things. Eventually we're going to go over all of it. We're going to probably have a really big UV editor video that talk about a lot of these tools and commands. But I wanted to kind of demonstrate just assigning this texture to this plane and changing the texture's position on the plane using UVs. So let's move on to something else. Let's try a cube. I'm going to go to Create Polygon Primitives Cube, like so. I'm going to scale it up here, put it up on the ground plane like so. So I've also downloaded another texture from cgtextures.com. Let me go back to Photoshop and I'll open that image. I've got this kind of crate looking image kind of showing one side of a crate that I want to assign to this cube to make it look like a wooden crate. It's a very simple object, a very basic object that you can probably find in hundreds of video games, the wooden crate. Let's go back to Maya. So with my cube selected, I'm going to right click on it, assign new material, and choose Lambert again. So with the Lambert 3 assigned to my cube, I'm going to rename it to wood crate, like so. Click the map button again, choose a file, browse to my wood crate uh, image, like so, hit open. So now we can see what we see here. 
So this is not quite as straightforward as the brick wall was. I'm going to select my wall here and hit Control H to hide it. So we're going to focus on the crate for now. You can see the crate image is not really being displayed the way I had hoped it would be, which was having each side of the cube look like that crate image. So I'll go back to my UV editor here, Control A to close my attribute editor. And with my cube selected, you can see the UVs that the cube comes with. These are how a basic cube is laid out when you create it in Maya, how the UVs are laid out. A cube has six faces, and you can see them here, one, two, three, four, five, six. However, I want each of these squares to be showing this portion of the texture so that all six sides look like this image. So in order to do that, we need to do a little bit more editing with our UVs. So if I right click and choose UV and grab, say for example, these four, I actually just choose these four on top, which would be this right here. So I have these four UVs, and if I wanted to move it, you can see, however, that they're attached all these faces are all attached together by these edges. So in order to move this face's UVs separately from the rest, I need to detach these UVs from the rest. I need to separate the UVs on this edge here and this edge here in order to separate this square face. So I'm going to double click on the Cut UV Tool, and here are the options for Cut UV Tool. Now I'm not going to go into every single option here because I do want to probably have videos focusing on these tools. So I do want to adjust the cut open ratio. By default it's 0.1. If I double click on this edge with the cut UV tool, you see how it separates like I want, but there's this large gap. I'd like to make that gap smaller so it doesn't uh, deform the perfect square nature of my UV shell here. So for cut open ratio I'm going to change this to 0.01 and hit enter. And now if I double click this edge you can see the gap it creates is much, much smaller, which is kind of more like what I want. So I'm going to close my tool settings here and double click this edge as well. So now this face has become separated from the rest of the UV shell. So I'm going to right click and choose face. I have it here and I can move it like so. And you can see in the perspective view that moving this UV shell or this face does not adjust the shape of the cube at all. It's just moving the texture coordinates, the UVs, of that face around. So I'm going to position this face here in this corner like so. This corner right here lines up in the image the way I'd like it to. I'm going to right click and choose UVs. I'm going to grab these two UVs down the bottom of this shell and move them down to the bottom of the image of where the crate is right here. Then I'll grab these two UVs, making sure to only grab the ones associated with the face I'm working on, and move them over here across to the end of the picture like so. And now you can see in my perspective view, that's what I'm looking for. I want that whole image to look like the side of a crate. And now I simply need to do the same thing for all the other sides of my cube. So let's do that now. Okay, so now we have all the sides of our cube looking like that crate, like so. So I can control shift H to unhide my brick wall. So now I have my brick texture assigned to this plane here. I got my crate looking like a crate for the most part. Now this is a very basic introduction to how you do this sort of thing. Uh, I would say that I definitely wouldn't write home about this one in particular. There's lots of uh, things that are wrong with this. I never also would recommend for any kind of professional project especially, but as you get more and more advanced into texturing, I would not recommend simply downloading a texture off the internet and just slapping it on your surface. I definitely uh, believe in the idea of personalizing and making sure that the texture that you're using is really what you want for your project specifically. Like for example, if I were to do this for real, Perhaps I would use that same crate image. Let's go back to Photoshop. But you'll notice here on the sides, in the bottom, I have like a lot of dirt and rocks down here at the bottom. You can see other crates along the sides of this image. This is simply a photograph of a crate. For an actual texture, I would want to clip out the part of the wood that I want to use. 
I would maybe adjust the colors, you know, maybe adjust like some of the wood grain and so on, so that it wouldn't be quite as repetitive. With like, if you see lots of crates in your scene, and you just see this same this same pattern of wood over and over and over again, having these knots in the wood image can make it very make it stand out that when you have three crates next to each other and they all have these knots in the same places in the wood pattern it gets very noticeable so you might want to kind of edit some of that stuff out you will probably not necessarily want each side of the crate look exactly the same like the lid of the crate would look different than the sides of the crate which would look different than the bottom of the crate you would have dirt and grime like you'd see here on this crate you kind of see the dirt down here and how it's dirtier on the bottom but if you're using this same image for the top of the crate like I am now you have that dirt pattern on the top of the crate which doesn't make any sense so there's lots of things you would do differently in a real quote unquote real project if you're making a crate also I wouldn't just use a simple cube these days these days especially with like video games and movies you would probably uh, model each individual piece of wood or at least the wood that kind of sticks out like this uh, support beam here probably would be modeled out so it sticks out from the side these uh, upper and lower border slab slabs of wood would stick out from the uh, vertical slabs in the middle of the box you would not just have a cube you would actually actually you'd actually have to model something you know so but this, this is an introduction to using textures and applying them to objects and adjusting UVs and so forth. So I think as an introduction, this works really well uh, for a beginner to get their hands dirty in making textures and applying them to objects. Where as we move forward, we'll talk more about uh, texturing. We'll probably get into some Photoshop a little bit and edit some textures and such. We'll get more into these UV tools. And we're going to be talking about different types of uh, projections like cylindrical and spherical we do have planar projection already uh, the planar projection video which you can see here on the side here if you like to click this video it talks about planar mapping textures or planar mapping UVs you can and all the options here I believe are the same nothing's changed in Maya 2016 so yeah this has uh, been a good introduction I think to textures I hope you enjoyed the video uh, please feel free to like and subscribe and comment. If you have any questions, please definitely let me know. I would definitely want to answer any questions you have. And especially going forward, making more videos on this topic so I can uh, focus on the things that I may not have explained clearly enough or things you just have questions on for the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.